Hey guys, hope you're doing well. It's Ryan. We're just going to do a really raw video today. No edits, anything like that. No background music because uh, I wanted to share some thoughts and some tips, some ideas if you're trying to sell off a large collection of cards. Uh, myself, these aren't cards from my personal collection. I was fortunate to run into an old uh, card shop, old LCS um, inventory. And I've had it for a couple of years. I've been selling from it for a while. So I just thought maybe I'd give some hints, maybe some tips or some things that I've experienced in this process that might help you if you're, if you're dealing with the same thing. So first thing I would suggest is get organized. You've got to figure out what you have. You've got to get it organized. So of course, get it organized into sports, get it organized into teams, players, whatever you think is going to work best and how you want to approach it. And that leads me to the second point is how are you going to approach selling this? Uh, platform first of all are you going to go to like things like ebay macari uh, are you going to spend time in facebook facebook groups or instagram so figure out what platforms you want to sell on and uh, come up with a strategy for that and come up with which cards are going to sell on which platform i think certain cards i'm going to put on ebay and then there's certain cards that i'm not going to put on ebay i'm going to put them in uh, facebook groups and strategic facebook groups so cards that are focused on um, 90s or 90s inserts i'm going to I'm going to put those cards there for sale. Uh, cards that are junk wax cards. There's junk wax groups in Facebook, our Facebook groups and Instagram, and they sell great there. And you just got to give some bulk deals and get those moved. So if you have a lot of cards and you're willing to give some good deals so you can get them moved and make a little bit on the way, uh, that's, that's probably a good option. So know what platform you want to sell on, get organized, and then determine how you're going to pair up or, or split up your cards. Um, I didn't want to deal with commons. I didn't want to do sets. I didn't want to do um, team cards, you know, just like team sets. I strictly wanted to focus on cards that I knew would catch people's eyes. So things like semi stars, or, you know, or hometown kind of hero players, stars, uh, you know, Hall of Fame guys, guys who are in the record books for different reasons, whether it's hits, home runs, uh, win totals, if they were in the all star, you know, if they're an all star, perennial all star. Um, just cards that I knew when people scrolled through, they would see these players and go, oh, that's something I'm interested in, and they would stop. So that's what I've done. So all of the commons that would necessarily kind of be bulked into more if you're trying to sell a set or if you're trying to sell teams, they all got boxed up. They got sent off to Goodwill. So what I'm dealing with now are players that I feel people will stop and take a look at and maybe consider purchasing a lot or, or a few cards of that player. Now, I still have a lot of things that um, may still need to go, but for the most part, I've got it pared down, and I've sorted through a lot of it. So get it organized, get it sorted out, and I'm still sorting. After two years, I'm still kind of consolidating things together to make sure. Like I've got a couple boxes that might have John Smoltz in one box, and he's in another box. So I'm working on that today, trying to get all that pared down. Um, so make sure that you have a plan. That's the, the biggest thing. And try to take great pictures of what you have be very honest about the condition and you know if it's not in great condition then give a good deal that you know you can make a little bit on but um, at the same time don't just give stuff away and at the same time you can give stuff away uh, I throw a little bit of extra in every cell just because I want to get this stuff gone um, what I've done is I've gone through it I've pulled out for example Hall of Fame guys so um, if I've got a huge stack of, say, Andre Dawson cards, like I'll go through and pull one of each year out just so I can kind of build a, a binder for myself. But there's so many of them that, that I mean, it's not a big deal. So I'm kind of keeping a little bit for myself and then, and then trying to figure out like how to move the rest of it. And that's really the help, just maybe find some other purchases down the road. Here's kind of what I'm doing at the moment um, in the process of just kind of sorting through some boxes that I haven't got cleaned up yet. So you could see things like there's a lot of uh, 90s uh, inserts from a lot of ultra sets. Uh, you've got some vintage 
going on here from the 50s, 60s, 70s. Got some uh, things from the 90s there. Got a Barry Bond stack. Then got a stack of uh, NFL, Montana, Rice, um, Elway, players, uh, just, you know, 90s stars. There's some finest hockey. So just trying to get these things sorted out. So this was stuff that I had gone through and kept but hadn't sorted through already. Here you can see there's some, some more vintage here. Um, 50s, 60s vintage. And checklist card there. A lot of these Kellogg's cards here. Got some uh, basketball. Just uh, these are like, um, like stars. Gary Payton, the stack here. I uh, got a bunch of Rodman, some Scotty Pippen, Jordan, very little. I think Jordan was kind of ran through already with this stuff. So just you know, Rashid Wallace, more Scotty Pippen there, John Stockton. So you can see I just kind of kept the stars and you know the guys that people will be looking for, Patrick Ewing, Kimolajuan. So just to kind of give you an idea. And then over here, like this is some, I think some more, yeah, like there's Reggie Miller. So I could just kind of package these up in star lots. Like I'll do so many Reggie Miller cards, so many Kim Olajuwon's, you know, NBA stars for sale. Like here's some more inserts, 90s inserts or subsets. Some stadium club. There you go, nice uh, beam team laser cut there from stadium club. Some Tim Duncan stuff from Press Pass. There's a Finest Refractor, Gary Grant. And then just a bunch of inserts, basketball inserts. So I could sell these as a, as a big lot together, or just players. Things like that. A bunch of Penny Hardaway stuff. So I got basketball going on here. I mean, this box here is just kind of hard to tell, but you know, it's got like... A bunch of Nolan Ryan, like this is just a ton of Nolan Ryan cards. Some Palmaro. Um, I think this is just a Cal Ripken commemorative baseball, which is stained. Like this stuff was in storage for a long time. Got a lot more like in the 80s, 70s. The owner would get a lot of cards signed, so he has a lot of cards of guys who are from the state here. So, you know, there's this huge stack of George Foster cards or Doyle Alexander, um, even though he's not, you know, major name. But So just a bunch of Eddie Murray's from Fleer, Donruss, Tops. Like, these are the ones I pulled for, for my set because I have a, a bunch of other Eddie Murray's that I can sell. So I'm kind of just working through this table right now, sorting cards out. These boxes I've just generally organized over time, but I'm trying to consolidate the the, the boxes that have been organized and get all of the same player together in that box. So I'm really doing this by player so I can just go out and build like sets of stars and things like that. That's my goal with this. And then over here, I've got just this old kind of armoire full of things that I've already sorted through so I can get to it quickly. So I had a fair amount of wax that I've sold and it was a bunch of random stuff. This is really what I have left. Sort of a lot of basketball, football, and baseball packs from the late 80s, early 90s. And then, you know, this is just things like top loaders that I've located. Here's a box of vintage. You've got anything from 55 Bowman, uh, 55 tops, all the way up through the late 60s in here. Um, some hockey here, just some random stuff to sell. So I've kind of gone through and sorted this out, went ahead and did them in some medium flat rate boxes so it was easier to manage and store in the space that I have. When I get ready to start working through the vintage, like I've sorted these, they're in order, but I haven't gone through and looked at, okay, what cards might be high number, short printed, uh, and of course condition, because they are condition sensitive. And so you're definitely gonna have to take that into account. Uh, I've got some, I think this is just packs that I have left that I haven't sold yet. Yeah, so you can see there's some, some packs in here. Uh, this is just some old storage, uh, like card top loaders or, or snap cases from the 90s that most of us don't use anymore because nobody uses those snap cases hardly anymore because we're worried about damaging cards. There's a box of just all the autographs that I found and sorted out. So, like a Russ Davis, and like these are in person, in person autos. Brit Burns. So, I sold a lot of these off, and you got baseball, you got football. In here, lots of the same guys that had signed these. 
So working through those. And just some, some 90s cards that some like artist proof. There's an air card. John Smoltz got some of these uh, preview refractors and then some other Bowman refractors in here. Molitor and just some random guys there. Palmaro. Let's nice move on. Gallery of Heroes. We got the uh, artist proof there. Rusty Greer and just some other random stuff. Randy Johnson. It's proof of Gant. Rusty Greer, the Griffey insert, Lieutenant Smith there. So a lot of, you know, you can find collectors. I mean, it's easy to do. It's not that hard. You just got to come up with a plan and, and be very strategic about what you're doing. And don't get overwhelmed. That's the key thing. This is something you're trying to do, something you've encountered. You know, take your time with it. You know, like I said, don't get overwhelmed. Focus uh, on one box at a time. Don't be too concerned about what everybody's looking for in the moment. Uh, just, you know, get a box out, list those cards and go from there and work your way through it. What sells, sells, what doesn't, doesn't. And, you know, you can list it later on. And just that way you don't have to worry about trying to figure out what everybody's chasing in the moment, especially if it's a lot of older cards, uh, buyers will come around eventually, especially on platforms like eBay. You can list things. It'll be up for months and then all of a sudden it will just sell. So don't lose hope. Don't get impatient and store the stuff in a way that's neat, organized, out of the way, so it's just not kind of looming over you, and just grab one box at a time and work from there. All right, guys, that's it for this video, and appreciate you watching, and remember, keep collecting and keep doing it for the love of the hobby. See ya.